This program has been made possible by the friends and partners of Joyce Meyer Ministries. I said, God has always got a plan. He's always got a plan. And just because you or I don't know what the plan is, that doesn't mean that God doesn't know what it is. Yeah, woo! I'm gonna read a little list here of things that we may have to press through. Rejection, betrayal, abandonment, unforgiveness, offense, self-pity, wanting to take revenge, Hard times and trials. Trouble you don't feel like you deserve. Self-centeredness. Jealousy. The desire to give up. Discouragement. Disappointment with people. Disappointment with God. And people-pleasing. How many of you had more than three? <laughs> okay, I got a confession. I looked at the list and I had 15 out of 16. <laughs> that doesn't mean I have, I have them all now. Thank God I've gotten through some of them. But every single one of those things I've had to majorly confront in my life and not let them take me out. Now I know you wanna know which one I didn't have. And you won't be able to sleep good tonight if I don't tell you, so. The only one of these I did not have was disappointment with God. I don't know why, but for some reason, I never blamed God for any of my problems. And I'm glad that I didn't, because I didn't have too many friends and I really needed Him. You know, some people, the first thing they do when things don't go right is they get mad at God. God is not causing our problems. He is the answer to our problems. What I really want to get across to you tonight is it's time to press into a new beginning. And some of you need a new beginning right now. How many of you need a new beginning right now? Okay. Well, gee, that's the whole crowd. I don't, need, I don't even have to say the other thing I was going to say. You know, you may need a new beginning in uh, getting out of debt. Maybe you've tried before and it's just a problem for you. You just keep spending money you really shouldn't be spending. Maybe you need to a new beginning with a bad attitude. You have a bad attitude. No? Nobody here with a bad attitude? Okay. <laughs> I'll try something else. Um, maybe you need, maybe you're the one that needs to forgive somebody. Maybe. If not, you could try to buy this teaching for somebody else. Maybe you need a new beginning in eating better. <laughs> People look at me and say, how can at your age, how can you be in that good a shape and be so little? Well, I don't eat everything I want and I work out three days a week, and for a long time I walked five miles a day until I started having trouble with my feet, and I can't do that anymore, so I'll just find some other way to get the devil. Amen? I got, yeah, well, you don't need to know what I got. I got plantar fasciitis, and then I got that taken care of, and then I got some kind of tendonitis. You know, there's just stuff all over your body, and it, it all wants to get some kind of an itis. I mean, there's so many itises, it's not even funny. <laughs> Colonitis and bursitis. And... Anyway. <laughs> we all need new beginnings all the time. You know, we get started and we're going good for a while. Maybe you need a new beginning in your prayer life. Maybe you need a new beginning in Bible study. Maybe you need a new beginning in regular giving. 
I, I, I don't know how this message couldn't be for everybody in some way, shape, or form. Okay, Paul said that I may know him and the power of his resurrection, Philippians 3, 10 through 14, and may share his sufferings, becoming like him in his death. So the apostle Paul is telling us right there that if we want to become like Jesus, we're going to have to share some of his sufferings. <laughs> and that's not a curse word, it's a Bible word. <laughs> that by any means possible, I may attain the resurrection from the dead. Not that I've already obtained this or am already made perfect, but I, what? <laughs> Press on to make it my own because Christ Jesus has made me his own. In essence, he's saying, if I think about what Jesus did for me, what he went through for me, come on. then I am determined that I am going to press through whatever I have to press through and be the person that Jesus died for me to be. Amen. Amen. Brothers, I don't consider that I've made it my own, but one thing I do. What a statement. One thing I do. It is my one aspiration. It is the most important thing to me. Letting go of what lies behind and straining, see it? Straining forward to what lies ahead. Now, I don't know if this is a happy message right now tonight or not, but I do know this. The people who come to hear me teach, I am not going to feed you dessert every time you come. I'm sorry, but I'm just not. God loves you, you're sweet, you got a great future. <laughs> There's a miracle right around the corner for you. Oh, I could turn it on, man. I could get you up on your feet screaming and yelling, and I could go out of here feeling like so on top of the world. But I've got a job to do. And I'm going to be accountable to God for doing it. And I believe that the job that God has given me is to help his people mature. Amen. Amen. We love to see people get saved, but I don't want to see you get saved and then just be a carnal believer all your life. I mean, Christians should be happy we, pe we, we should be infectious. People should just want what we've got. They should want to just be around us. There needs to be something different about us. We're not supposed to be like everybody else and be like the world. We're anointed for hard stuff. Did you hear me? We are anointed for hard things. We don't need... We don't need to glide into everything in life. A challenge really should just make us go, all right, bring it on. Come on. You know, we'll feel much better about ourselves if we, if we get a little stirred up and press through things and just this lazy me. <laughs> Isaiah 61 and verse 3 says that God gives us the oil of gladness for mourning and the garment of praise instead of a faint or a heavy spirit. Jesus wants us to have a present expectation of something positive instead of constantly mourning over what we've lost. You can find something to mourn over daily if you want to, it's not that difficult. All you got to do is sit, sit around and remember all the bad things that have happened to you in your life and forget all the good. 
You know, everybody in here, you've had more good things happen to you than bad. Everybody, you've had more good things happen to you than bad. We talk about hope, and I was amazed to find out when I really did a thorough study on hope, that hope is not just, well, I, I hope, you know, I hope so. No, Bible hope, and Peter says we've been born again into an ever-living hope, so guess what? You, you, hope is something you can always have. No matter what kind of problem or circumstance you got, you can always have hope. But it's not just, well, I kind of wish God would do something. No, hope is a positive expectation that something good is going to happen to you at any moment. What happens if you start getting up with that expectation? I can't wait to see what God does today. Boy, I bet today is gonna to be good. All things are possible with God. There's no telling what he may do for me because he loves me. Thank you for sitting down for another candid conversation today. Oh, you're welcome. We're going to talk about something that no one wants to experience, but <laughs> probably most of us do at one time or another. Um, and that's when God just feels kind of distant, mm -hmm. almost like we can't reach Him. Um, people say the prayers are hitting the ceiling, <laughs> whatever that, that may be. Um, have you had times like that in your life, or what has that been like for you? I have had in the past, to be very honest, I don't have anymore, and I'll tell you why. Um, because I no longer need to feel God to believe that He's there. Mm -hmm. I think that as you grow as a believer, and I've had lots of time to do that, you, you begin to, to know things, not just like know them in your head, but you you know that you know. It's like the, it's a revelation. And there's so much in the Bible about God being with us all the time. And He's ever present. He's everywhere all the time. Mm -hmm. He knows everything and sees everything. And, and the Holy Spirit lives in us. And He does. There's nowhere in the Bible that tells us He ever moves out. And so um, it's just so important that people don't live by how they feel. Mm -hmm. That's a really big thing for me in my teaching. And I, I mean, I still see it all the time. It's, it's like, boy, if you live by how you feel, you're just really gonna have a rough, rough time. Now, there's actually a name for what you're talking about. It's called dry times. And uh, a lot of people do experience them. But like I said, I think it's a matter of of knowing, you know, Thomas, doubting Thomas, mm -hmm. he uh, he always had to be shown everything. Mm -hmm. And Jesus did show him, but he said, blessed are those who believe and have not seen. And I think you could also say, blessed are those who believe and have not felt. You That's know, a good so way to say it, yeah. It, I think if people can realize that, I don't, I don't have to feel it. I know. Mm -hmm. I know that. I know that God is there. I know that He loves me because it's impossible for God to lie. He's not a man that He should lie. It's an impossibility for God to lie. So if He says, fear not for I am with you, or like He told His disciples before His ascension, for lo, I will be with you always, even unto the end ends of the earth. And I love this statement, God is no more than a thought away. You know, all you have to do is think about God. And instead of, instead of thinking, well, I just don't feel God, and I, you know, just think, God, I don't have to feel you, I know you're here. Yeah. You know, it, it's been a while. I, I completely agree with you, and I think now that the thing is experience. Mm -hmm. The thing is I have enough of a bank mm -hmm. of what I've seen and experienced in God that that 
even when I'm not seeing it or experiencing mm-hmm. it right now, I know who he is. Right. And so that makes such a difference. Um, but there are still those times when when something really, really difficult happens. You know, maybe someone's dealing with a a very difficult illness. Sure. And they're they're not seeing those answers that they're asking for. Right. It doesn't mean that um, God isn't working, but we're not always seeing the results right. of what He's doing. So there are those times, whether it's that or or a huge change in your life, lo- losing someone really yeah. close to you. That that for me, it it is an easy place for me to slide into, whether it's thinking God is distant mm-hmm. or even being being angry because he allowed these things mm-hmm. to happen. And I, I do have to be very careful right. that I pull myself back and correct that thought pattern yeah. and and adjust mm-hmm. because it's it's very simple right. to get there. Well, I can tell you, you know, just to kind of go back to your original question, um, it is important to me that I don't ever sound like overly spiritual, like I don't ever have any problems. Because if, if I want— oh, you're, you're so practical and yeah. real, I don't think you have to worry if about I that. If I go but. by how I feel, <laughs> yeah, you know, there are times when, many times when I don't, I don't feel like I'm hearing from God or, you know, matter of fact, He's pretty silent sometimes for a long period of time. And uh, I'd much rather he, he talk. I mean, I love to just get one word from God or, you know, one special touch from God, one, you know, something. And there are times when I do feel closer to God mm-hmm. than other times. But I think, like you said, experience and Knowing, knowing that the word is true, and I wonder how much of the Bible we really believe, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, or, yeah. or how much of it we have to feel or see, and we walk by faith. Yeah, we don't we don't walk by what we feel or what we think or or see, and we'd all rather have feelings. I mean, who wouldn't? I I'd, I'd rather feel God, but I just. I think I went through enough of that that I finally just wore myself out with it. It's like, I just, I don't want to, well, God is here if I feel him and he's not if I don't and he's working if I see something and he's not working if I don't. And, you know, I've learned to. That's a great point. We can't live on that roller coaster. No, you just, and that's, you you start to feel like a yo-yo, you Mm -hmm. know, it's like, and that's not the realm God wants us to live in. That's living in that soulish realm. And he wants us to go deeper than that to, Believe what he says, no matter what we feel like. And I love the story. Uh, it's in Luke chapter five, where the disciples had been fishing all night and they hadn't caught anything, and they were washing their nets and putting everything away. And Jesus said, "Go out in the deep water, and you'll catch some." And if you read it in the Amplified Bible, Peter basically said, well, I don't feel like it, I don't want to, and I don't think it's going to work. <laughs> but on Those three things. Yeah. Yeah, how many times have we all said those things? Yeah, but I mean, I mean, he didn't say them exactly like that, but right. if, you re- if you really read it and see the yeah. the essence of what he was saying, that's exactly what he was saying, I, but we we fished all night. We didn't catch anything. Mm-hmm. This this isn't going to work. And you know we're tired. We're exhausted. We don't we don't feel like doing this. We don't we don't want to do this. But on the ground of your word, mm-hmm. we will lower the nets again. And I love that. And I think that's the place that God wants us to come to. That no matter what I think or what I want or what I feel, if God's word says it. Then I believe it. I mean, really, why do we why do we believe our feelings so much? You know, feelings are fickle, and they mm-hmm. can, you can feel one way one night, and the next morning feel something completely different. And feelings will disappear when you want them, and come when you don't want them. And they're, so they're very fickle. We can't we can enjoy the good ones, but boy, if you start depending on your feelings, you are going to have a rough, rough go. Yeah, and 
same thing with your mind. I mean, you have to be very careful when you're thinking something. Is it just your thought or is it really a God thought? It just takes so much pressure out of you if you can get to that place. And I don't know that you can with anything other than experience, to be honest. Mm -hmm. I think that some of these things, Ginger, just take time. You know, we're growing we're growing spiritually, and I think a, a, I think a Christian who has to always see something and feel something to believe it, and I don't mean this insultingly, but a good example, it's, it's like a baby with a pacifier. You know, they're not going to be satisfied unless they got their binky. And so all those feelings are kind of like our binky. You know, we want to we wanna feel everything, and we're just not going yeah. to. You know, it reminds me, our our um, grandson was in his crib, and they were trying to wean him off of the binky. Mm -hmm. And so when he wakes up, we were supposed to take the binky away. So I popped it out of his mouth, and he had two more in his hand. He just <laughs> popped another one back in. And I took that one out, and he popped another one back in. He had binkies everywhere. Oh, my goodness. And it, we get that way. We reach for everything. We mm -hmm. think we have to have— the, the feelings, and we reach for all these different things when God is right there. Yeah. And if we could just let go of all that other stuff that we're holding on to, to feel right yeah. or to um, have, have our life the way we think we want it to be, if we can let go of that, um, God is nearer than we think He yeah. is. There's a scripture in Isaiah, and I don't remember the reference, but it says that God will remove the props Mm. out from under us. And I think about like sometimes when a new tree is planted and it's a little skinny tree, they'll put wooden props going four different ways to keep it going in the right direction. And so a lot of times these other things we need, these feelings and these you know, right thoughts or to see something happening all the time. They're like those props. Mm -hmm. But the time will come when God will remove those props. And it even says in Psalms that he tests and tries our emotions. And so, you know, God will, he'll take those things away. Now, that doesn't mean that you never feel anything, but we, we do have to come to the point where we're not depending on that. Otherwise, you can see, I mean, like, you know, here's a good example. There are times when I get done preaching and I just feel like it was just absolutely no good. Now, that doesn't happen to me often, but it does happen. Every once in a while, I'll be preaching and I'm just, it's, for some reason, it's really hard for me that day. And I will, sure enough, that'll be the day when somebody will say, man, what you said today changed my life. Mm -hmm. And so it's not, it's not good or bad because I feel it's, it's good or bad. Yeah, it's, that's such a good point. I mean, God is faithful, yeah. and He, I've done my part when I get up there, and He's not going to leave me stranded. And sometimes even, there's so many things that affect us, and sometimes even if I just don't feel real great, it'll make the message seem a lot different to me than if I do. Mm -hmm. And uh, I have to be very careful about watching what other people are doing. You know, I usually, I don't like when I'm preaching to look at somebody that's yawning all the time, you know. I want to yeah. look at somebody that's taking notes and, you know, really, really into it. And so that the, we are a spirit, we have a soul, and we live in a body. And our soul is our mind, our will, and our emotions. And so it's a new birth, God comes to live inside of us, but it's in that deep part of us where nobody really but us and God know about. And God wants to, in order to show, for us to show him to the world, he has to also own our soul. Hmm. And so that's, that's the whole maturing and the, the growing up process. Paul said, I can't feed you with meat. I have to keep giving you milk because you're, you're not ready for it yet. Well, what do you really mean by that? I can't teach you a strong message. I have to just keep teaching you things that feel good. You know, just mm. dessert messages. I can't give you, you know, 
things that are going to correct you or confront you with some kind of truth that's going to, maybe you're going to have to apply that to yourself. And so, but it's okay because we're all that way. We, we, we go through that. And as long as you are sincere and you want to grow in God, you ultimately, less and less, these things will be important to you. Yeah. In the beginning, they're very important. But we're all at a different place in our walk with God. But no matter where you're at in your walk with God, if your heart's sincere, when Jesus returns, he's going to bring you across the finish line, and we'll all end up in the yeah. same place. <laughs> so when God seems distant, hold on to the truth of who he is and what his word says yeah. and not our feelings or or even the circumstances of and our lives. And don't even bother voicing that. Well, I, I feel like God just isn't here. Yeah. I would just, it, it's always better to say the truth, hmm. no matter how you, you feel. When I feel like God's not working, I'm not seeing anything, I will purposely say, God is working on my situation right now. Yeah. And I'll see the result at just the right time. Or when it seems like things are taking way too long, I'll say God's timing is perfect in my life. You know, you can you can talk yourself off the ledge, if you will. Yeah, <laughs> that's great advice. Thank you. Yeah. Life is a journey with many ups and downs, and it's up to us to learn to enjoy it. John 10.10 10 tells us that Jesus came so that we might have and enjoy an abundant life. Discover biblical principles for living a fulfilling and joy-filled life with Joyce's small book, Enjoy Your Journey. Start enjoying where you are on the way to where you're going. Along with the book, you'll also receive Joyce's three-part audio teaching series, Pressing In and Pressing On. Learn to press in to God's incredible purpose for your future. You don't have to settle for a mediocre life. If you put these practical principles into action, these audio teachings will be available to you anytime in your Joyce Meyer Ministries app library, so you can listen whenever you'd like. These resources are available for your gift to the ministry of $25 or more. Connect with us today. Visit online at JoyceMeyer.org or call 1-800-727-9673. Need a girl's trip? Register now for the Love Life Women's Conference, September 22nd through 24th in St. Louis, Missouri. Come on, register now and join us. If you are a medical care professional, we need your help. In fact, people all over the world need your help. And it's an opportunity that will change your life as well. You see, through our volunteer medical trips, we travel all over the world to places that are very remote and have desperate need of health care. So go to our website, check out the schedules, and join us right here. We hope to see you soon. For more information, visit JoyceMeyer.org. This program has been made possible by the friends and partners of Joyce Meyer Ministries.